So thank you, Mark. Um, <coughs> the, the idea was of, 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 um, of this panel is that uh, after Mark's um, quite exhaustive um, listing of what uh, is to be thought over in such a situation, we will look at two jurisdictions which are, as I call them, more um, recipient jurisdictions rather than originator jurisdictions of leniency applications. Hungary is clearly a recipient jurisdiction in the sense that you will have some local leniency applications, but really the, the cases will be rare where, um, where, where the situation does not involve a cross-border element. Um, yes, there, there has been a cartel of the, the Budapest taxi companies, but I, I, I have heard that there has also been one for the Zagreb one, so that's a, unfortunately, or maybe we should investigate whether there is one in this beautiful city um, where they would need uh, some input from uh, experienced uh, regional lawyers. But um, that, that, that would be a case where, where a leniency could come in the local market. But even if you take a very local market, say a ready mix market, um, for a major town, let's not take the capital, let's take a smaller town in, in Hungary, even, that, even, even, if, even if the cartel is, uh, is specific for that town, the mere fact that the cartel involves, and it will involve, at least two multi or two, three multinationals and their subsidiary is producing ready mix on that market, even if it's a sheerly, in fact, local market, will escalate the whole thing um, to Mark's level, uh, to a multi-jurisdictional level. The companies will have to think about what Mark has just explained, or think through all this uh, in less than a week, maybe, um, involving local councils and thinking about what, what will happen if I escalate this case. Well, it's a case from a um, middle city in, Buda, in, in, in Hungary. But what I do there is I report an infringement involving two of my major multinational competitors. Uh, can I exclude that the same thing has happened in, in a number of other cities around Europe? Do I have sufficient intelligence to know that within a week or so? So that, that is why jurisdictions like Hungary and I assume also Croatia will be more jurisdictions where, which will implement multinational strategies, leniency strategies, rather than originate them. Uh, and with that, um, uh, I think I will not bore you with um, what we have in Hungary is the, um, is the ECN model law, and it's just, uh, it's just a standard one. Uh, you will have immunity for the first applicant and then leniency for second, third, and uh, theoretically infinitively, 50% um, for the second, up to 30% for everyone else, or the only, the, uh, the only the company that coerced others is excluded from this possibility. So what um, you should think about when, when it's about Hungary, now exactly the points that, that Mark has mentioned, uh, these are potential pros and cons. So you will have a, an immunity or, or a reduction of fines. That, again, uh, you will have to balance it very rapidly. What is your exposure in Hungary? Does it really make sense to a uh, to submit a leniency and with all the escalation that this can lead to, or do you rather have a, a strategy of not being so proactive and wait and see, and if so, then you may move with, uh, uh, you, may, you may even want to be the second one, um, and then, then you have your application in the cupboard, it's a drawer application, you put it in the drawer. Uh, if no one goes in first, then you don't do anything. If someone goes in first, then you take your application from the drawer and, and hope to be the second one. Uh, that's also a strategy. Not necessarily the best one, though, but uh, can be a strategy. So you have to balance with the fines. Now, there will be a number of jurisdictions around Europe where fines are not that often and not that heavy. So uh, some would say Belgium is one where the fines are not very high. Austria will also not, you will not show the very high fines in the headlines or Luxembourg. The Hungarian fines are proportionately to the size of the economy are relatively large. That is a jurisdiction where um, multinational companies will recall, yes, we have heard there has been this insurance case involving 7 billion foreigns. Yes, there we, we've, we remember this construction case involving another 8 billion foreigns. Relatively large amounts in terms of the size of the country. It can take away you know, one or two years profit of your, 
your subsidiary there. Then you have um, the second one. Indeed, as, as Mark, Mark has mentioned, there are jurisdictions where, where there can be criminal law consequences. That has a massive impact on your ability uh, to submit leniency or at least to think about it. If, um, if your employees will simply say, well, look, if it's about my, my freedom, I'm sorry, it is something I'm not prepared to do and I will have my own criminal advisors and I will not cooperate with my own company uh, unless someone forces me. So that, that's full stop, that's it. Um, that, that is exactly the reason why when criminalization is mentioned in Hungary, one of the strongest op opponents of this is, is in fact the, the GVH, the Hungarian Competition Authority itself, uh, rather than, of course, together with, uh, with representatives of the industry. Now, in Hungary, the, uh, the, the, only, uh, the only field where you have criminal sanctions is just bid rigging in public procurement and public concession tenders. But a large number of cases in Hungary involve public procurement. And you ha we had two leniency cases involving public procurement cases. None of these, they, they were submitted by mid-sized Hungarian companies. They were not, um, those were not submitted before the investigation. They were submitted during the investigation. Very right was Mark's point to say, an authority does a downgrade. In fact, an authority can even do more. Uh, what the Hungarians did was very uh, proactive. Uh, they, in fact, went to the company and, and said, Look, you are a small family-owned undertaking. You'll have huge fines. By the way, have you seen this provision of the criminal code? Well, we haven't yet received a leniency application. We know quite a lot about this cartel, but if you bring a leniency application, we think we can declare you number one, which will help you a lot. And then, in two of these cases, none of it involved very large multinational construction companies. None of them, of course, uh, submitted a leniency, but these smaller Hungarian uh, entrepreneurs did, uh, risking the uncertainties with the, with the criminal provisions, because the criminal provision says the first who reports to the authorities, and it's, we don't have any, of course, any case law from criminal courts, what that means, who should be first. Can we argue that uh, if a company submits a lenience, this is sufficient for, for the exemption under the criminal, uh, criminal prosecution? Uh, when this was introduced, the, the, the the competition authority very fiercely argued, listen, if you introduce this, you, you, you need to introduce also an exception rule in the criminal code, which they did then, um, which says that if you're number one, you will not be imprisoned. But what does it mean to be number one? Private person number one, uh, legal person number one, if you're an immunity applicant, if, of course, it's, it's the corporation, it's the undertaking which does that. Will it cover all employees? Will it cover only one employee? A lot of... Um, Uncertainties ex exist, and we don't know. Um, there are, to my knowledge, seven criminal investigations in the pipeline, um, which will, at some stage, end up at court, and then we will have more clarity on this. We don't have um, company uh, executive disqualification that was quashed by the Constitutional Court in Hungary. Uh, had it been introduced, had it had, it had a longer life, uh, probably would have also had an impact, a negative impact on, on on the preparedness of, of executive to help their company in leniency. Then you will have the, the next one. In a number of jurisdictions you will have, uh, certainly in Central Eastern Europe, this seems to be a standard practice, you will have an exclusion from public procurement. If you have a bit rigging case, the Hungarian rule is very interesting, it says in the Public Procurement Act, this comes from a, a di public procurement directive, European directive, which says for grave professional misconduct you can be excluded from, pro uh, from public procurement tenders, this was introduced, this was translated into Hungarian law by saying if you, if you had been caught as being one of the triggers, uh, then you're excluded from public procurement essentially for five years. May